What's going on people, it's Mr. Back again and this time we're at a special place, the church, as far as fans call it, back at the ground. Thank you very much for the music side team for giving this place as well, but I've got the legend, the man, Kevin Campbell. He's back after so many years. What's it like Kev, <laughs> to be back? <laughs> well I've got to say, it feels really good. It feels really good to be back in the city, but sitting here with you guys, looking out at the at the uh, the carpet, you know, it's uh, loads of good times here. The memories keep flooding back, loads of different memories, training here, playing here, um, crowd, winning games, remember those winning games and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's exciting for me and especially being a guest of the club tomorrow as well, it's going to be a, an, a real special day for me. The first day when you signed, like I said, Malcolm and Des will know, what was it like, you, Chris Bart Williams, signing? And it was pretty much like this because it was, um, it was pre-season, so, you know, it was, there was nobody around and taking pictures, I think there's a famous one, me and Bart with our backs together yeah. and stuff and he was out on the pitch, you know, so it feels a bit like that time for me you know you go through that and then you get on to playing i was here for three years you know so I, like i said yesterday there were some tough times there were some good times and there were some great times and um me being a positive guy <laughs> the bad and the good pale into significance it's the great times that i remember most because they, these really were special Mm -hmm. We're talking about, like I said, Forest, they're almost close to the, to the Premiership and like I said, Malcolm, we've, we've seen so much happiness, you've seen so much happiness and disappointment, disappointment as well, mm -hmm. it does as well, but we're almost there and like, just talk Kev, like, what's it like, so we, you've seen the European Cups, yeah, um, yeah. it's been 23 years now and we're almost there, aren't we? like, it? There's been times where I've been so thankful that I lived through that European Cup era mm. and I've got friends who've never even been to Wembley with Forrest and it was just like a natural, every every season we would be there in a final of some sort. Um, and then obviously uh, the great man left and uh, Frank took over and we had some momentum, it was good times. And obviously bringing players like Kev, Bartman, Pierre in and you know, we were close. There's been times where we've been close, but this season, it feels very, very special. It feels like something different's happening. We feel like we're together. And that's one of the things Kev touched on last night, was saying that the, to be a successful team, the Arsenal team that you're in, Kev, you have to have a togetherness. Yeah. And uh, that, that's what it feels like at the moment. So, um, what do you think for a season so far, Kev? I think this is, we've, we've seen it happen so many times. We've seen it happen so many times with teams they don't start off great and let's be honest Forrest struggled early on under Chris Hewitt struggled and you know, it's difficult to put your finger on why they struggled but it just didn't work out for Chris and then you know the football club made the decision to sack him and I know Chris at the time was getting a bit of stick and etc because the team ain't functioning you're gonna get that's part and parcel of the job but well, the club made the decision to go for Steve Cooper. Good resume at, at Swansea, good resume with young players. But even I never saw the transition that he's going to do it. I didn't see it. I know he's a good manager. You know, I know him. What he's done here is has been nothing short of remarkable. And the team are getting stronger. That's the other test. When you see you have a good FA Cup run like I mentioned last night, knocking my ass and all that. <laughs> yeah, didn't hear the, yeah, didn't hear the last of it, by the way, didn't hear the last of it from these guys, these top guys. And um, obviously then going on, you know, another Midlands derby, Leicester, you battered them here. Yeah. You, you, uh, who else did you Blue play? Blue. No, no, you played uh, uh, Huddersfield, Huddersfield, Huddersfield yeah. you beat them, and then you played Liverpool here. We ran them close. Well, let's put it this way. It was 11 against 14. Yeah. Three officials. Three officials. Yeah. 
For me, it was 11 against because, 14 because he Very costume. Because he used to play for, as everyone knows, he used to play for Everton, so he's got like a no, soft spot. <laughs> well, listen, it's not even a soft spot, but <laughs> I know some of the things that go on, mm. the bigger teams get get the rub the green. Yeah. You know, we've seen it happen so many times. You know, there was one you, great chance here. Great chance at this end of the uh, St. Canelo. Yeah, and it you know it just didn't go for you that one. Yeah, they went up the other end and they they got a break and they got. But that's the difference. That's the high level difference. Yeah. But what happened? Forrest made a great account of himself. People were taking notice of Forrest plays, right? Yeah. From one to eleven, everyone's like, "These are championship," and at the time you were still moving up the league. He's a championship, but we get to now. He's <laughs> in third. You're three points behind second. With three games to go. Home game and two away games, and that team that's above you is the second to last game of season. It's written. <laughs> it's written. I think I think it's a good point you make, Kevin. The fact that we we went toe to toe with a Premiership team on three occasions. Three occasions. Mm-hmm. You can do it once. You might do it again but three times three to times. go it, it shows how far the club's gone you mentioned those big games the local derbies winning at places like Millwall you know Swansea tough, tough places, places to, go. to go and get a result and the momentum's just building like the season when you was here in, in 98 I think we played Wolves around Easter you know 2-1 it was 2-1 3-0 no, no, three, three, oh, that was here. A, no that was here no that was 3 nil here 3-0 here I got one yeah I got one at that end um, tap in, yeah, tap in. And listen, they all tap in. <laughs> they can't be saved. If that, if that was VAR, it would have been, it would have been Let me tell you something. If you put it in from 30 yards and I put it in from one yard, it counts the same. The big thing for me, Kev, we talk about Steve Cooper. When Steve Cooper came in and there were Forest fans who were like, we don't want him, because they didn't know him. Yeah. Personally, having been involved in youth football for three decades, I was like, that's the man I want yeah. because he's a good fit for our, for our club. Yeah. Um, the big thing for me is the minute he came in, he took all that toxicity out. His first press conference, don't I sit in A block? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Right. It was horrible. Yeah. Those yeah. first few games were. It was Painful. a horrible, horrible. Painful. It was a horrible feeling. We've got fans at each other's throats. You were either for Chris Hutton and back in the team, or you were totally against him. And then Steve Cooper came in, and he took all that toxicity out in his first press conference. Right. So, question: How do you think you would perform? if Steve Cooper was your manager? Well, I'll be honest with you, I don't know, but all I could go on is, is, his body of work. Yeah. His body of work is, he's with the England set up, he wins the World Cup under 17. Yeah. He's got some gifted players, let's be honest, he's got Foden and Sancho and all those boys. But, players play from that to Bordier, who plays at Swansea now, he was, he was a, a uh, prominent defender there. These are good players. Joe Latsbody was at City. Really good lads. But they speak so highly of him. Mm. Why? Because he's, he's personable. He knows exactly what to say to you. And that is a gift. That is a gift. So he comes in. This, uh, Harry Bassett was brilliant for me here. Right? He knew exactly what to say. He knew, he knew how to handle the group. I think so. Steve Cooper would have been fantastic for me. So because he seems to be able to know what to say, he seems to be able to handle the group. He knows what to say to the fans. He knows what to. I I found something out yesterday um, about Steve Cooper. You know where it was mentioned. I think Fletch mentioned it that you know there's been managers here who was taking down pictures of the European Cups yes. and all that kind of thing. And he's welcoming the, the the old teams and the players back in. Come and have a cup of tea and come and have a drink. That's what this club is about. That's how it should be. You should never turn your nose up or or try and deflect away from the past. Because the past makes who you are now. So he's embraced everything. And the hardest thing for any football club is to get the right manager. Yeah. So just taking Malcolm's question one step further, does, does Steve Cooper remind you of it? Does he remind you of any of your managers from the past? Does he? he doesn't what? remind me of any of my managers. But it reminds me of a particular manager, and um, I wouldn't listen. What I, one thing I won't say is he is <laughs> this manager, but I think he's got a little bit of Brian Clough about him. 
in a certain way. The way he motivates, the way he gets players playing for him. Because some of them forest sides that Cluffy had, player for player, mm. you'd be like, they're going against them. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a no contest. But he always got the best out of the players, always. And, you know, he always had that right smile on his face because he knew, it's like he knew something everybody else didn't know. And um, Steve Cooper's not as outspoken, obviously, or or got that bravado. Yeah. But I think he's got a touch of a Brian Clough in that he gets players to play for him. He gets players motivated. And maybe they're not the biggest names. But as we've you've proven, you've had big names here before. It doesn't matter the name. What matters is the badge on the shirt, yeah. and are you going to put your lot in out there? If you do that, you got a chance. And he seems to be getting that out of the players mm -hmm. for sure. Guys, talk to Tom. Like he played, he played with managed young players. Like I've got Brent Johnson. Mm -hmm. six, 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 15 goals he scored now this season, and He's got more. I think. Really? There was people who say he did, he did well for Lincoln. He comes to start like Chris Hutton, he said he said what he did about Brennan, but Steve Cooper has got the best out of him. As a striker, and as a young striker, do you think that there's like he's over is over do you think he can do more in this sports team and especially under Steve Cooper? Because Steve Cooper, like I said, he's done fantastic. With not just with Brennan, Ryan Yates, Spence and Especially Brendan Johnson, and he, he, there's so much pressure on the lad, and he's done so well for Forest. Isn't he? Yeah, I think his level's gone up. If I'm honest with you, I think his level's gone up with the pressure that was on him, because mm -hmm. obviously Cuffy came through the ranks, which is always a nice one for the fans. Um, very talented young man, of course he is, but I think the level that he's been playing at. And the consistency as well, the consistency he's had, scoring goals, creating chances, being a threat. Because sometimes it's not about you scoring all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it's you've got other teams have to account for it. And the fact that it may shift the defence two, three yards more that side mm. where they've got to defend him might let somebody in. And in the middle, I think Zinkanog starts getting a few more goals yeah. and stuff like that. So teams have to accommodate, you know, where is he? Where is Johnson? They've got to, they've got to account for him. And that opens up spaces for everybody else. How good do you think he could be? Um, I think he could, he could go right to the top. He's got all the attributes, that's for sure. I don't know the lad, I've never met him. When you get to the top, there's a lot more demands because people expect it and demand it and you'll be paid accordingly yeah. but obviously with that comes different pressure in a young side who are finding their way you know, he's, he's proving that he's consistent now moving forward obviously I'm sure he'd love to be in the Premier League with Nottingham Forest we're hoping it happens, of course we are. We're hoping it happens because this club deserve it. You guys deserve it. The fans deserve it. The football club deserves it. And I think the players and the manager have deserved it the way they've they've attacked the season. I really do. But you look at, to be a top player for 10 years, mm -hmm. how he handles bumps in the road is going to be the key. You know, yeah. Des and I had a good chat this morning about you know, when you do go with the dips, how you handle it. I've not seen him really have a dip yet, so I don't know what his character is like that. But he's got good parents, he's got a dad who played. Yeah. Shout out to David Johnson as well. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Jono. He's got a good dad, he's got, you know, dad knows, been there, seen it, done it. Played for Forrest as well. He's got a lovely mom and the family around him. So, that's gonna be the telltale sign, because it doesn't always go like this. Yeah. Doesn't always. C can I ask you, if, if, if and should Forrest get promoted, is this the best place for Brennan Johnson and some of the lone players as well? We've got a lot of lone players at the minute which have really excelled at the City Grand. I think Garner's, have, been, Garner's been good as well. Absolutely. And Spence, of course, everybody yeah. knows his ability. Yeah. Arsenal want him as well, but that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I think Kev was trying to convince me this morning. I'm not happy to do it. Oh, jeez. Because supposed to keep that quiet. <laughs> but, but what I'm kind of getting to is, obviously, these guys are all linked away now because they're, they're on loan at Forest and they don't belong to us, so it's going to perhaps go to a bidding war, even if Forest go up. Is this the best place for them to progress their career should Forest get promoted? I'm going to rephrase that question. Is this the best manager for well, them? Well, th that was going to be part of the answer. Um, look, the key is bigger clubs will cover these players, but there's nothing better than being somewhere that you know. With a manager that you've already played for, with a fan base that know what you can do and respect you. There's nothing better than that. If you're going to leave that comfort and go somewhere else, then you really are going out of your comfort zone. You're going into, um, you leave yourself open to a bit of pain. Here, you know you're playing, you know the system, you know the players. Yeah, there, there might be some additions because now you are up there, of course, and um, the manager knows what he's doing. But I think this would be the best place for those players. But because it's unknown at the moment, why, you know, will we go up, will we not? That's why we ask these questions. Because you stick another, what is it, 200 and something million quid in not in the forest back pocket, oh. then all of a sudden it's not even a question, is it? Nice. You're signing. As, as the great man would say, you're signing some, you know, you're signing. <laughs> getting those blank you contracts, go, getting those blank contracts <laughs> out, down the corridor, like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Once, you got the, once, you, once you get there, you'd be crazy for Forrest not to sign them. Brian Clough, yeah? Yeah, Brian Clough. Brian Clough, Kev. Tell me a few stories. Because like well, all the Forrest fans. Well, the one. Just the one. Well, most of my problems with Brian Clough were away from this place <laughs> but the first time I met him was right there this side of the centre circle and it was the FA Youth Cup semi-final first leg against Forest and uh, really good Forest side at the time and um, we'd done really well we'd won the game 3-0 and um, I was shaking hands in the centre well, virtually in the centre circle and then I felt somebody grabbed the back of my shirt and my ear and were leading me towards the, the tunnel and I couldn't see who it was and I was just going backwards like shot thinking you know, I'm a big lad who's, who's grabbing me like that and then I, I caught a glimpse of the green jumper mm. so you know any any expletives out of my mouth was stopped straight away <laughs> led me past the away dressing room down past the home dressing room, round to his office, sat me down, went the other side, went in the top of the drawer, pulled out a blank contract and said, sign here, son, <laughs> <laughs> sign here. <laughs> and it was like, I said, Mr. Clough, you know, respect you. I said, but I'm Arsenal boy, I'm Arsenal boy, through and through, come through the ranks. He said, I don't care, <laughs> sign it. <laughs> so, and at that time, the, the door was banging, Pat Rice was banging on the door. And, um, you know, Pat Rice kicked the door open. And um, Pat Rice said, you know, you, you get back to the dressing room. And, you know, what are you doing, uh, Cluffy? You know, so <laughs> he said, if you just witnessed what I witnessed, you'd have done the same. <laughs> so I left. And I was walking down the corridor and then I doubled back because I didn't see Pat coming out. Mm -hmm. I doubled back and I put, I kind of like look around the corner and Cloughy's getting the single malt out with two glasses and come on, I'm going to drink to that. So <laughs> that was my, you know, that was the first dealings I had with him. And every time after that I saw him at Highbury or wherever, you know, he was always great to me. He was always great to me. I mean, uh, you probably sit. You probably hear a couple of the stories on Under the Cosh. Yes, yes. yeah, you hear that. But that was the first time I had any, prob any problem with him or dealings with him. So, so what do you think Cluffy saw in you? What what was it? He was Because you say every time he saw you, he was... Yeah, don't you hurt me and stuff, yeah. I, I just think he... Listen, when a man like Brian Clough 
rates you. Because he's not doing it because he don't rate you. He's doing it because he rates you. He sees something in your game that he could, that he would use. That's what I think. And um, you know, it's quite flattering at the time. It's just his right foot weren't too good, you know. He was, uh, <laughs> but he volleyed me on the on the leg. But no, it's um, he's a special man, special manager, obviously, legendary manager worldwide. Yeah. And. Um, he took a liking to me and uh, a liking to my game, so that's what it was. And I, I, and I truly respect him for it because you know I had some lovely conversations and lovely kisses on the cheeks from him <laughs> and stuff like that. You know, he was a really, really lovely man. Mm. Let's fast forward. As I said, we'll talk about Dave Bassett, mm. and, and he's not been given much credit. Like I said, he not enough. He, not enough. He won the league. That that team that had and. What was he? What kind of manager was he? Because like I said, he had great players like yourself, Pierre, Mark Williams, even were my favourite player. Um, so many players. And what was it like to be in that team as well? Because like, you got relegated for the Premier League, but yeah, he yeah. was still a strong side, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, that that was a thing. There was, you know, that team got relegated, and you think to yourself, how did we get relegated? You know, whether it was injuries or, you know, I think the the sacking of Stupid. No, the, the, the sacking of um, Frank Clark yeah. threw the dressing room a little bit, and and then you know Piercy took over, and Piercy was so well respected in the dressing room, and that changed the dynamic. Yeah. That really did change the dynamic, and I, I can't stress this enough, guys. That the dynamic in the dressing room is everything. The manager can be the manager, but if you've got a good dynamic in the dressing room you can go on to, to be okay. But if the dynamic in the dressing room breaks down, you're in trouble. Yeah. That's where we were, we were in trouble. And that dressing room culture just wasn't right. Piercy was falling out with people who we got along with and it was just wrong, it felt wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think he was put in a position where he would never turn Forrest down. That's why he took the manager's job. But I think, I think it was too much, if I'm honest with you, for him to, to do at that time because there was a hell of a lot of pressure with him playing and, and managing so it was a tough one but you know Harry Bassett mended everything yeah he mended everything he, he had one-on-ones with us all before the season I told you what he said to me he asked me a question he said how do I get you going I said you play my time with Pierre he said right done P off that was it Meeting was like 30 seconds. Wow. And um, pre-season got put together with Pierre and um, started the season, I think we won the first game at Port Vale, 1-0, yeah. I scored. Then we played Norwich here, which was 4-1. But that was arguably the, gonna be the two teams battling at the top of the table. Yeah. And remember, they took the lead in that game. Good. And it was like, all right, all right. And you know, we, we ended up beating them 4-1. And then you start, you start, okay, we've got something here. You know, we've got something. But he was always brilliant. His coaching staff were good. But he was always for team spirit. Always for team spirit. And that, that just goes to show now. I look at the differences now with things before. The team spirit seemed to be a little bit broken early on in the season. Now that team spirit is flooding, it's flying. So you get the right manager who can build that team spirit or mend it in our case at the time. It makes for, when everybody's going in the same direction, it's, it's hard to stop. Okay. Didn't, didn't we start that season with seven or eight wins in a row? I think it was Oxford or somewhere obscure we lost. We so to, yeah, we battered, I think. Yeah, we I think seven or eight wins in a row and we'd really sort of set the mark. Set then. the mark, I mean, you, there, was, there was a cup game as well. And it, here's the great thing about, um, Cup games at Man City. The, no, there was a cup game. It was an early one. Eight one. Eight one. Oh, yeah. Donny, Donny, right? Donny. And um, he, you know, Harry Bassett said to me, he said, um, do, you, "Do you fancy playing?" I said, "Yeah, of course I do." I said, "I could get me goals up." He said, "Well, you're not." <laughs> so <laughs> he said, "Put your feet up. We've got a big game Saturday." You're resting. I need you for Saturday to run them ragged. Right, Dino, you're stuck. 
that was it. But that's the way he dealt with everything. It was just like kind of blase, but, but, yeah. but he's lifting you up at the same time. Yeah. You know, you're for Saturday. Don't worry about don't worry about that cup game. I've got enough weapons here. You be ready for Saturday. That's the way he dealt with us. He was really, really, really good at that. It's experience. He knew what he was doing. So, and because we weren't just young players, we were experienced players. He knew exactly how to deal with us. Kev, okay, you briefly mentioned Pierre. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I think he was an amazing player. I loved his time at Forest. I enjoyed his everything he did. Obviously, it all finished very sour, and because of that. He splits the Forest fan base. You either love him or you just dislike him for whatever reason. Um, just how good was he, and what was he like to play with? Uh, brilliant guy, brilliant character, who could have an argument in a fold box. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's sometimes the Dutch way. Um, but on the pitch, that's where he came alive. He was dedicated. He was gifted and his game fitted perfectly in with mine. I, I can't stress that enough. He getting him here and me and him being dovetailed together transformed our attack because he had somebody who was a four who would make a run just to move someone out the way so we can get it. And he realized that it wasn't just about me. And um, his game wasn't just about him. So once you got a partnership and you leverage that and you, you get to score loads of goals and you know we do the celebrations and all that kind of thing that's what fans you you this is what i would yeah. ask you yeah. you fans tell me when you got a front two or scoring oh. goals we're celebrating yeah. and the team's going places and the celebration as well yeah we'll talk about later. but what, what's <laughs> what's not to what's not to love yeah. you know I'm sorry now remembering those goals, you know, but one by one they're all I, I see Pierre scoring from forty yards against Middlesbrough the free kick. Do you, to, do you remember he's that it, one, the what about the one is it, yeah, he's it one from just there yeah. and it's rocketed it's into what rose all the way yeah, into the top. Exactly. What was what was your favourite goal? At the sick round. I know it's been quite a while but well, you tried to take it off me when <laughs> against Wolves. Well, when we're at the keeper, you say so tapping. That's my favourite goal. I know the thing like I said that the Mizbah game, we, because that was a big, that was a huge game. game. We, we, that was we the broke game. them down here. Yes. Brian, Brian Robson in. came in after the game and said that on Sky, the referee was a home, a home, yeah. homer. And it's like, whoa, whoa that's like, four nil, five nil. He's yeah. a home all right. Yeah, of course yeah. he is. <laughs> you know, but listen, he's he had to try and back his team mm. and. You know, look at the players they had, you know, they had proper players, Gazza and all yeah. those guys. I think Nigel Pearson was in that team as he well. He was, he was. You know, not in a boy, Townsend. really, really good guy, Townsend. They, they were loaded. Yeah. We were loaded and they were loaded and it was like Battle of the Titans. It was one of three you were going to go up, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, you know, we played them here. And I think it was a Sunday. It was so Sunday. It was yeah. Super Sunday. And, uh, it was really, you know, really kick off. Yeah. <laughs> we took them apart. We took them apart in the end. Some some scintillating football, and then we lost to Sunderland the next game. Yeah, yeah. in the week. <laughs> no, in the week. No, but but doesn't that sum up the championship? Yep. Yes. Because we play Middlesbrough here, and it's a game of football. You play Sunderland, it's a fight. Yeah. And they probably had more fighters across the pitch than yeah. we did. Had a good team out there. And we could one person we couldn't deal with was no quit. No yeah. Quit. I know I know Quinny from obviously Arsenal. You know, came through the ranks, he was a bit older than me, and I know him from Arsenal. He's a lot better than people give him credit mm. for. And him and Kevin Phillips were there for Yeah, yeah. I, good player. And Kevin Phillips done the business as well. They were good side, strong side and, and it's funny, ironic, us and Middlesbrough went up and they they didn't. They lost out to Charles. Yeah. So another another question about Pierre. Um, what was your relationship with, with it like with him off the pitch? Because we know what happened when you left Forest. Um, it was not great circumstances, and obviously Pierre did what he did. How did that make you feel? Well, our relationship was excellent, and um, you don't go on strike for somebody leaving your club if you don't have a great relationship. I think um, Pierre felt betrayed, mm. if I'm honest with you. He felt betrayed because 
we felt we were, we were building something and we wanted to take that partnership into the Premier League. We knew we could. We, we knew we'd, we'd scored goals in the Premier League. We knew we could take it to the Premier League. This team were Premiership ready anyway. And, it, you know, the powers that be took it away from him. How did it make me feel? It made me feel sad. Of course it made me feel sad. I felt sad for Forrest and I felt sad for Pierre. But there's only one winner, it's the club. The club have to win. Going on strike doesn't solve anything. And I, I, I told Pierre that. I said, Pierre, don't go on strike. Get in, get training and get, get playing, get scoring some goals. And you know, if you have to move after that, then you move. But you know, get back to get back. To, he was he was just adamant. I just felt that he felt so betrayed because maybe he hadn't had that camaraderie before. Yeah. A teammate who was always looking out for him, um, who shared the same laughs and jokes, and we had a really good dressing room in there. You know, some of the mornings we were in um, getting massage, we are in the massage room, we used to have a TV in there. And Bartman always used to put Jerry Springer on it in the morning, right? <laughs> and people are, normally people are in the dressing room getting changed and all that kind of stuff. People were in there early, changed, and waiting for Bartman to put this Jerry Springer on. And when they're watching Jerry Springer, and then the gaffer will come, right lads, come and go to training. Hold on, Harry, you know, one more minute. He's, the the punchline's coming in a minute. <laughs> You know, you are not the father. Whoa! <laughs> but you know, we all shared in that. We all shared such great times. And it's just sad that it, it how it broke up. You know, who knows where this great club would be if some of them decisions, some of them poor decisions, weren't made. And I, I truly believe Pierre made a poor decision. Mm -hmm. really would you talk about? Let's talk about Forest again and this season. And say. We were, it's been, it's not been great for the last 23 years, but now we talk about Cooper, some fantastic, brought in someone called Dane Murphy, mm -hmm. chief executive, and no one knew who he was, but he, like, I'm talking about Marinakis, yeah. he's pumped in so much money, and like I said, big respect to, big, to the owner, by the way. Big respect to Marinakis as well, and like I said, it's, as far as fans, we've never been so excited. Mm -hmm. As a footballer, as an ex-footballer, right, what's it like to see Boys fans, like you play for Arsenal, West Brom, Everton, what's it like to see fans happy and see players seeing it like, wow, this is what we're here for to get the fans happy. That's what the game's about. The mm. game's about, you're at a football club, because if the fans are happy, I can guarantee you, mm. what's happening on the pitch is going to, to plan. Mm. Earlier on the season, you weren't happy. The results weren't going your way. Performances weren't great, so you're not going to be happy if the fans ain't happy. Something going wrong on that pitch. So you know it never changes, no matter what club where you are. It never changes. The the, the players are the key, and the manager's got to get those players in the right frame of mind to be able to go out there and win football matches. And it's hard. It's hard to be able to win and win consistently. Mm. But you know you mentioned. Jury and all these guys and Steve Cooper. It seems like that the owner has got the right people in the background. 100%. For any football club, that's vital. What I don't want to happen is for other teams to go. Oh, he's done a good job there. Yeah, thank you. Because the dynamic changes. Yeah. You, you change one person out of the backroom staff, it shouldn't change it, you would say. No, it should be. No, it does because. The dynamic, if you're on the same wavelength, they're obviously on the same wavelength. They know what each other wants and they, everyone's got each other's back. And that reflects in the team. I, I think what you say there is a, a reflection on Dave Murphy as well. Because he, he was at Barnsley and they had the most successful season. They just staved off relegation, incidentally beating Forest mm. towards the end of the season. They, they got to the playoffs with Dave Murphy sort of steady and orchestrated yeah. Things, yeah and then all of a sudden he's gone because Forrest have seen his potential you know and, and every, he's obviously ambitious and then this season look where Barnsley are and look where Forrest are almost roll, roll, roll reversal. reversal but listen this is football and um, when you're the club who are looking to move in the right direction you've got to recognise the talent that's the key 
you know, Forest aren't going to go out there and be spending 50, 60 million on, on players. No. So what do you do? You get the best people in the background who can identify the talent, get it in and get on working with a manager who's excellent at developing young talent. That's the name of the game. Mm. You've seen it work and it will be the icing on the cake with the cherry on top before it's getting promoted. Because that, that then proves the model. Yeah. Which young player wouldn't want to come to Nottingham Forest? Even from some of the bigger clubs. Mm. Who wouldn't want to come to Forest and play their trade with a manager who's forward thinking, who wants players to express themselves, play a good style of football, they enjoy themselves. Yeah. It's 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 there. It's it's all there. And this is the great thing. Twenty three years of her can get erased in the next three games. I've, Alex, I've been saying to you, Kev, I don't want to get like I said, it's, it's been a fantastic season and something that we're never never gonna forget. Yeah. And um there's three games to go. And that's the question I'll ask you, right? Three games to go, mm-hmm. we've got Swansea, mm-hmm. we've got Bournemouth, the biggest game in the in twenty three years. Twenty three years. Yeah. And then we've got whole do you think Cooper's the man yep. to get his free wins? Yep, I do. I think, like I said, I said it last night and I'll say it again, I think that Fulham win was the prove it game. Mm. Beating Fulham at Fulham was the prove it game. You can beat Fulham at Fulham, you can do Bournemouth. Key is, take care of business, last home game of the season, take care of business. There. I don't, I'm them. getting too excited, man. I don't, I don't want to get to it now. No, you got no choice. I can't get too excited. No, you've got, if you're around me, you're going to get it. <laughs> so you're going to get it. Trust me. If you're around me, you're going to get it because you know what? I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm for excited. This. I'm no. excited for but this. I can't game. get too excited because Malcolm Des will know as a Forest fan. I like. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've had 23 years of it, so don't worry about it. This is what I would say. In football, momentum plays a massive part. Massive. Who's the team with the most momentum? Forest. There's just going to be difficult for the whole of the ways. I need, I need one. <laughs> we're, we're opening its door on the door on tour, not door, door on the floor. floor. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. But uh, again, I'm sure you guys are looking forward to these games. You know, coming from nowhere to you've got a chance of automatic promotion. Three games to go. And you play the team in second at their gaff. The pressure's going to be on them, not on you. If we get promoted, it'll be the first time a team has ever lost its first six games and has got promoted. Well, wouldn't that just be fitting for Forest? Yeah, because we do to, so to, many things first. To, 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 <laughs> to, 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 to break these things down, to be the first to do it. And, and listen, I believe the football club deserve it because you've been the most consistent, apart from Fulham. You've been the most consistent yeah. team in the league. You've been more consistent than Bournemouth. 100%. That's for sure. So now is to prove it. You proved it by beating Fulham. I, f- I truly believe you're going to beat Swansea convincingly tomorrow. Kev, how are you feeling? Uh, well, I got it wrong. <laughs> I said 3 1, but you know what? Come on! <laughs> and then it's Tuesday. You take them out. It's Holloway. And then it's Holloway. And you know what? If I said to you earlier on in the season, you win the next last three games of the season, you're in the Premier League, you'd have, you'd have said, call me crazy, right? Oh, okay. yeah. I can't stop oh, you. But you would have called me this, crazy. This, this is why we're football fans though, isn't it? This is the drug. This is the addiction. Exactly. This is why we keep coming back. We're, we're nervous. Door, this is why. It is a deep thing. <laughs> <thing. laughs> this is why we come to football for these big games, you know. Yes. Bournemouth away when everything rides, rides on it. Yeah. You, you, you'll remember more than anybody the the, the Anfield game, Arsenal. Oh you know, yeah, oh, I was there. Oh, incredible. And nobody give us a chance. Nobody yeah. give the team a chance. Nobody. We went up the day of the game. Work that one out. Biggest game of the season. First in the league versus second. And we went up. I met Dave Rollcastle. Dave Rollcastle picked me up at Brixton Town on at five in the morning. Wow. Wow. Wasn't it a Friday that game? Friday, Friday night. night, yeah. Friday wow. night game. Five and Friday morning. He picked me up. We went to Highbury. Me and him loaded all the skips on. He's playing in the night. 
we loaded the skips on and we met everybody else we had a full coach met everybody else at london colony training ground then off we went to to liverpool got up there a bit of lunch lads could put their heads down team talk right do battle and george graham said listen we're at nil nil we've got them exactly where we want them he said we'll probably end up winning the game three nil he said he said but i'll take two this is what he said before the game. Wow. Wow. Man. So he was ultra confident that the boys could do it. At 1 0 at the time, with minutes running down, you know, ball Lukic gets the ball, and there's that famous Lukic yeah. to Dixon, Dixon to Smith, Smith to Thomas, Thomas. Thomas. Suffer grabs now. now. <laughs> and go, you know, I got nearly got arrested on the side of the pitch because I was, I was in with the Arsenal fans. The, the players who weren't playing were in with the Arsenal fans. And with about few minutes to go we walked it round the pitch we got them to the side well as Mickey Thomas went through the, the Arsenal fan come out you know you, you get up and then next minute you see it hit the net and I was off and the two coppers grabbed me and luckily because I didn't have the blazer of flannels I had my own suit on <laughs> luckily one of the staff said no he's a he's a he's a he's a player like you know I was only what was I 19 at the time yeah. Just, just one thing on that game. Obviously, you spoke last night about Tony Adams and, and how much of a, a player he was for Arsenal. And the reason I mentioned him here is because that night he won a little place in the hearts of Farley's fans, didn't he? You know, he he, he went and rubbed John Orsage on the head. Was that was that spoken about? Was that mentioned or no? Is it just no? It wasn't. John I, I know Tony writes in his book. That, that was for Brian Laws in the FA Cup semi-final. Yeah, I mean, look, he's um, John Aldridge. He's a good lad, John Aldridge, but you know, he was a sore loser on the night, wasn't he? He, was, yeah. he kind of got up, and yeah. kind of like, fobbed him off. Um, listen, I've got to say this: the backroom staff at Liverpool, Roy Evans and Ronnie Moran and all those guys, were top class were top class after they came in, brought a couple of crates of champagne, had a glass of champagne in there with um, the Arsenal staff and said, listen lads, Ed, you know, fair play, any team that comes here and wins by two clear goals, deserve it, yeah. you deserved it, you know, but we're, we're coming for you next season, you know, <laughs> had to leave us with that, you know, we're coming for you next season and, they, and then they left and they won the league the next season and then we won it the season after that. And if I'd have said to you from that moment Liverpool won't win the league for 30 years, you wouldn't have believed it. You'd have put me in a straitjacket, <laughs> wouldn't you? You'd have put me in a straitjacket. But that's how that's how football can turn. So when the times come for you to do it, be decisive. You know, be be confident. Although you might have in your heart, oh, you know, I don't want us to lose this. Trust in the team. Trust in the manager. You know, what have they done to make you not trust them? I've watched them. I trust them. They've got, uh, they've got a team, and they play as a team. This is a point I've made on Door on tour earlier in the season. Is we all say in Cooper we trust, and it comes becomes a bit of a cliche. And then when there's one or two tricky results, some fans get a bit itchy and a bit a bit panicky. And I've always said, do, I've, I've I've almost put the question back through Door on tour. Do, do you really trust Cooper? Because I do. Mm. You know, I've trusted him since that Fulham game when we got trounce 4-0 you know here and I thought this guy's going to take us somewhere because the, the consistency of what they're doing time and time again you know they find a pattern of play that Joe Worrell admitted it after one of the games they use that right hand side the strength mm -hmm. playing off the strength not, not, not coming up with a any rational plan to try and break teams down. This is the way we play. This is what we believe in. You know, and fullbacks really high up the pitch. You the know, the thing is, there's it works. Yeah, you can have the best plan in the world. If it don't work, yeah. it ain't the plan, is it? The fact of the matter is, Forest are the second most formed team in the league. Why? Because it works. What they're doing works. So everyone's afraid of you. Everyone's afraid of Forest, and that goes back to the Brian Clough thing, doesn't it? Yes. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> the best, the best of faces. Um, Dave Seymour. Did you ever play against him? Yeah, for Everton. Yeah. Everton. Yeah, no, no, not only that. For Arsenal against 
Keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah. Where we got him from? Yeah. Oh, he plays Michael. Plays Michael, yeah. Michael's excellent, but I got to play against Dave Seaman obviously in training as well. And you see the work, working with Bob Wilson. And myself and Wright he used to go with Bob Wilson and the goalkeepers to get extra, we get extra shots and they get extra. Yeah. Yeah. Dave Seaman. What about your, what was that Spurs goalkeeper? Is that Hans Sagers? Do you think it's him? Hans Sagers, yeah. He was here. <laughs> was it? Of course he was. He came in after Hans from Brooklyn. Because he's supposed to be good, is he? I thought, I thought it was good. I liked him. <laughs> ben. I liked him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the best goalkeeper you played against. Defender. What's the? Who's the best? The, the toughest defender you've ever faced, Kev? I get the, asked this one. So define tough. Okay, the hardest one. The one Def, define the, the one that was difficult to play against. They're all difficult. Look, yeah, but there's always one. There's <laughs> the always one. one. The one. No, there ain't no always one. You see, this is. You see, th 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 let me just tell you this because you think in your head that there's one defender who has got your got your card. There's one defender. Yeah. No, because this is what professional football is. I play against Des today. Des gets the better of me. But the next time I play against Des, I get the better of him. That's the way football is. So does that make Des the hardest? Does it make him the toughest opponent? Okay, well, well, okay. So there's one thing I will tell you. I played against two back fours in my career that were like ridiculous. One was an Arsenal back four, and the second one was an AC Milan back four. Oh, um, well, did Tassotti. Barese, Costa Corta, and Maldini. Oh, what a back four. Played against them in the Super Cup. Yeah. Wow. And um, I'm honest with you, never got a sniff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fell in love with that team. They're 1990. Oh. But I've, I've got a massive soft spot for AC Milan, and I've been to the stadium, but not been to a game. And that, you know, that made me fall in love with football, yeah. you know, and, and the football, I, I supported Forest, but seeing that European Cup team, Don Adoni, you know. He played, Desai was in midfield. What? You see, you, did, you didn't know, he was a midfielder. He was a mid-central no, midfielder. I remember when he went to Chelsea, he wasn't, you know, he sent it back. Sent it back, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at, he realised, this is what he said to me, um, he realised when he, when he came to England, he couldn't play midfield. Mm. Trenches were too much. It was too much. So we had to, he had to go to the back to see everything. So because it's, it's crazy, man. And this is like, you know, this this level and and the level. It was like, you know, you know, I've done it in Italy with AC Milan, one European Cup finals and all that. Because that that team won, was it three in a row? Mm comes to England he's like I've got to go back I've got to send it back so that goes to show you how tough England is to play um, but that those two back fours oh jeez wow that AC Milan team as well we've not even mentioned the three Dutchmen oh. <laughs> so it was a big defender all day and then they've got they've got three of the best players ever yeah. Rijkaard Rijkaard Holly and Van Basten yeah wow Prince. I mean Although that was a little bit before, but that's all part of the AC Milan trajectory, wasn't it? Yeah. You had all of them. I mean, they had a they had a lad in midfield. Well, it was a bit of a striker uh, from Yugoslavia, whatever called Savicevic. I'm telling you now, as a left footer, I'm telling you now, as a lefty goes, you know they always look more elegant, don't they? Yeah. He reminded me of Liam Brady so much. Wow. He really did. Really, Liam Brady was my favourite Arsenal player. But the stuff that guy could do on the ball, on the pitch, oh my God. And the lads, so the two back fours were playing against each other. We played a nil-nil draw at Highbury. And shock. That was a shock. <laughs> it was nil-nil. And we played them in the San Siro and they beat us 2 nil. And I'm telling you, it was a war of attrition, the defences were strong, but they just had a little bit more than we did on the night, on the night, you know. But that back four, incredible, amazing.
amazing, truly amazing. What's the best player you played with? Um, probably Gaza. I'll say Gaza. Uh, Everton. Yeah, I played with Gaza at Everton, yeah. but you know, going with with England at the time and seeing seeing Gaza playing against him as well. So you take the whole the whole mix. Gaza was someone who could just dictate a game. He could take hold for a game. That that's what I loved about Gaza. You know, and. Um, became a friend obviously he came to Everton and stuff like that and he wasn't the same player but you know when in, in flashes he'll show you something he'll just do something or he'll be in a tight spot and he'll just get out of it quickly and he'll and he, that was the old Gaza but obviously he didn't have the legs he had the injuries and stuff like that but you know in his, in his prime there was telling you there was no one better I'm telling you now Nobody better. Following on from that, Kev, I've got a question for you. And when Daw did his online, uh, his lockdown specials, his interviews, one name kept cropping up as the craziest footballer in that era at Forest, Andy Johnson. And, and you've just oh, mentioned Gaza. Oh, we go. You've just mentioned Gaza. So my question is, who was more bonkers, Gaza or Andy Johnson? <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that, I, you know the truth. The truth. I don't know. <laughs> and that tells you something. That tells you how, how crazy both of them are. I don't know. Jono's mad. Jono's mad. He's bonkers. Gazza's bonkers as well, let me tell you. He is mental. I've seen Gazza do some things, mate, that you just go. <laughs> what, what, why would you do? That's close. Do you, do you think they ever met? No chance. <laughs> <laughs> They've probably played against each other, and um, guys have probably not made him. Uh, John O. But John O. probably kicked him. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee that. <laughs> that's 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 standard. <laughs> that's standard. Um, I would, I might even go as to say, bonkers is Andy Johnson. Crazy is Gaza. So if he's bonkers. <laughs> it's, it's John O. Uh, if he's crazy, it's Gaza. How about that one? Great personalities to play with, though. Both of them are great personalities to play with. Andy Johnson, I don't think he gets the credit he deserved in our team. Mm. Because there were times where there were certain games that we needed him. And um, we talk about that goal against Wolves. Or was it, was it Wolves, wasn't it? Here. Yeah. Superb, superb. I think goal. he played a one-two with you, didn't he? he, he, he but he, I, I think Kevin's kit in. <laughs> I th no, I think the goal I shot and it got blocked, and then he came in and put it in the yeah, bottom corner. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I'm mistaken, you could check that. Um, but I think Andy Johnson's he scored a really important goal. I think he scored a cracker at Stockport. He did left foot, left. It, well, yeah, left from about twenty yards, yards twenty-five yeah, yeah. yards, and, and we needed that because. I think he scored one at Wolves earlier in this. At Wolves, at Wolves, yeah, he did. Two one win. We lost. No, no, we lost. Oh, we lost. We, we lost. We lost that game. Mm -hmm. But you know, he tended to come up with goals when we needed it, which was always a good sign. And um, you know, he was a warrior in the centre of the pitch with Jeff and stuff like that. Yeah, and and Scott Gemmell. And yeah. Scott Gemmell and all. But great, great banter. Yeah. Great for the dressing room. Great on the coach. You know. He'd go down for a, for a jimmy and he'd come back up and he'd start bother naked and you think, what's going on? <laughs> he's walking up and down the coach and you know, there's other coaches you can imagine. <laughs> but he's probably said a, I, I, I probably said another coach there and he's, he'd say, driver slow down, you know, and he wants to, yeah, that's Jono, you know, beds are getting turfed down, fire exits and all that, all part and parcel of John Owen. Adam Rogers, Tank and Jeff and their little crew, they were team spirit, togetherness, camaraderie. But you let them be them. That's mm, the key. Yeah. You let them be them. We're not mentioning like I'm talking about Frank Clark and Malcolm talks about it every single time you know, when he went to Germany. That like you were that European tour. What was that like? What, Just it's to Munich. Yeah. You, Malcolm talks about it all the time. Yeah. It was mad. Yeah. Uh, listen up. Again, it got mentioned last night. Uh, Fletch mentioned it. I didn't think Frank Clark 
was given a lot of time by the hierarchy here. Mm. But with that said, Frank, I thought Frank performed miracles. What was it? Quarter final? We got yeah, a quarter final, final, quarter final yeah. against Bayern Munich. And we were in with a shout. Yeah. You know, you go to you go to their place. Yeah, I mean, they've got Klinsmann and Zieger and all that. Yeah, I remember Schalke. Yeah, I mean, these are, these are, you know, one of the favourites. Yeah. You know, these are one of the favourites. If they're in the European, they're going deep in the European, you know, mm. Champions League or whatever, European Cup at the time. And then, you know, we took them on and we, we made a good account of ourselves. But the trip was, was, was good. Germany is, is, is good, it's welcoming, and um, it was a good game. Didn't do so well here. Um, we got taught a footballing lesson. That yeah, night. got taught a footballing lesson. Klinsmann really came into his own as a world class player that night, and it was an act. Ashley's a football fan. You appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was an incredible night. We know. And Ashley. you have to. Yeah. You have to appreciate it, but, you know, again, that's with a team, that's with a team kind of cobbled together. Mm. You know, so that was Frank's power. Frank could do that. He knew how to set you up. He knew how to to get the best out of out of the eleven, and uh, and stuff like that. But again, I don't think he he was given enough. To, I've, I think if Frank Clark was manager, um, the season we went down, we would have stayed up. But they sacked him. Sacked him too too soon. And if they sacked him, fair enough. Don't give it to Pierce. He kept um, Harry Bassett. To manage it, we would have had a better chance, I think. 100%. Yeah, I think we would have had a better chance. Um, last but not least, Kevin, like I said, Cooper, we talk about him, he's been, like, he's been fantastic for us. And um, do you like, if we are get, if we do get promoted, like I said, it always happens, teams always come up and come down. We mentioned like, teams like well, I know, Fulham, Norwich, but do you think he's a man like can steady for us in the Premier League if we do get promoted? We're going to have to. Yeah. Gonna have to. There's no if buts or maybes. If Forest go up this season, Forest need to be in the Premier League for the next four or five seasons mm-hmm. to establish themselves. Then you've established your club again. Because mm-hmm. if you yo-yo, you're setting yourself up for a fall. Yeah. You really are. So is he the man to do it? I believe he is. I believe he still had to work on the budget. Yeah. To be honest, and um, he's done well with what he's got. But if you're going to be up there week in, week out, it's the you need quality, you need better quality, you need experience as well in the squad. And um, because it's all very well one off games, but it's every week. When it's every week, when the level's up there, when you drop. It's intense. You get punished. Yeah. That's that's the difference. And um, I think he, he can do it. I, I, I really do. I think he's the perfect fit here. Yeah. So, you know, it's an exciting time, man. I'm telling you, it's an exciting time. And I, I believe, smiling, really. I believe, I believe, you know, it's first time. I really do. It's been a pleasure, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thank hey, listen, pleasure's all mine. You've got me. <laughs> you got me back at church. You've got him at last. You got me back at church. Look at this. Years, but it's been a black, It's been a pleasure. Kevin, thank you very much for doing this, man. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, Kevin. Thank well. you. Cheers. Cheers. Well, if you enjoyed Cheers. this, Cheers. make sure everyone subscribes to the channel. Please get Mr. Do Daily to 500 subscribers because he's doing it wearing as a full kit, as you know. Uh, so people subscribe to Do Daily. Like I said, it's been a pleasure. Thank you everyone for watching and make sure everyone watches the channel. Up the bloody reds. Up the reds! Do <laughs> it. Right. right, back to your wall, Sequa and Kev. Like I said, memories. So many memories you've done here. I want to get on the pitch. <laughs> I want to get on the pitch. I'm going to have a little roll around. It's like, um, hey, listen, this is, where the, this is where the magic happens. This is it. And uh, ain't it in good nick? It's in great nick at the moment. And uh, I can't wait for the game tomorrow, I'll be honest with you. You know, we're guests there and uh, doing the lounges and stuff like that. And uh, special place. Special place. Uh, it's like, this could be a, we could be in the Premier League three games time. And like I said, 97, 98 season, we went up. You was there. I believe. Do you? I, I'm, I'm leaving now because you're no, you your, your motivation. No, no, no. Do you believe? Your mo- oh, do you believe? I, of course I believe. Good. 100%. Of course. I don't want to hear no fumbling. You believe. Mr. Dorr believes. I believe. Up the forest. <laughs>